Hello and welcome. We are going to take a look at Milady Standard Cosmetology Course Management Guide CD-ROM. This uh, course management guide is the most comprehensive one that has ever been published. It's to support the 2012 edition of Milady Standard Cosmetology textbook. The purpose of the course management guide is to aid the educator in meeting the objectives of advancing and improving the standards of education in your institution. It is designed to serve as your partner in making cosmetology education effective, interesting, and fun. When you load the CD into your computer, this will be the first screen that comes up. And by clicking on Course Management Guide right here where you see it circled, um, that will take us to the details. But before I do that, I want to explain that what is on the Course Management Guide CD-ROM, all of the tools that is contained in the hard copy, the print copy, are also contained on this CD. So the, the print copy becomes almost a working copy, and you can use this as your backup or if you need to print out a lesson plan because you lose one for some reason, this is a, a way to use both. But this tool, the Course Management Guide on CD-ROM, actually has a few tools available that the print copy does not have. So as we start, let's, let's clarify that right up front. When you click on this first icon right here, it goes to Course Management Guide, it is going to bring up a list of various things to choose from. By choosing the table of contents first, it will take you to a PDF, um, PDF document. It will open up a PDF file that contains a table of contents for this course management guide. It just walks you through what's behind each tab. The second piece of this uh, document that you can print out contains the preface. The preface is a detailed explanation of how to use the course management guide. It will take you through every section, explaining each section to you. If you're ever unsure about how to truly use this uh, product, go back and read this preface and it will give you a really good understanding of how to completely use this guide. When you go back to the, to the page here, the next item that you can choose is transition tools. And when we click on transition tools, it is going to give, is going to pull up another PDF file that is, we call a revision synopsis or a transition tool. And the purpose of this document is help you understand what's new in the 2012 edition versus the 2000. I know one of the big challenges that we have, we, we have students often in two different textbooks and so we've got different chapter names and we've got different material. This is an overview that will help you immensely in your preparation for delivering to students in both editions in the book. So it will tell you where the information is in the 2012 edition. It will tell you where the exact same information can be found in the 2008 edition. And then it gives a synopsis of significant changes. So, for example, in the chemical texture services chapter on um, in the 2012 edition, new to this edition are Japanese thermal straighteners. Some information has been removed. Some of it moved to Chapter 4 on communications. Others have just been completely taken out. And that's all identified right here in the synopsis of significant changes. When we go back to the screen page, the next tool you can choose from is the instructor support material. So when we click on that, uh, you will see a couple of options. The first one is a cosmetology course syllabus or a course outline. This is just a sample tool for you. If you want to, to take a look at your course outline, do you need to improve it, are you missing a few key areas, this is a good overview of what a standard basic cosmetology course outline will look like. It's a, a two-page document uh, based on a 1,500-hour school and it contains all the components that are necessary for a course outline. So take a look at that as a possible sample to see if you want to improve yours or restructure yours a little bit. This is a good guideline for you. The other sample tool that we have is a theory grade record. This is a place that you can, you can um, make one like this. You can print this one out and use this one. It basically lists all the tests that are in the course management guide with um, the, the hard copy with each lesson plan basically. It has a place for you to record the student's grade, the date they took it. Uh, you could actually even have a column where you can identify when you posted it to the computer. In this day and age, most of us are computerized. 
where we want to track all their test scores on the computer, you can show that, hey, I did post it to the computer on this date. And there's a place for the student to sign off. They taught, they, they did take that test on that date. So this is just a tool, again, some support tools to help you out are located on that tab. When we look at the next option available, it's lesson plans. Now this is uh, probably where you'll go most often. When you click on lesson plans, it will take you to a list of all the different lesson plans that are out there. They correspond to the chapter number. So if we click on lesson plan 1.0, uh, we are going to get the lesson plan that goes with chapter one on history and opportunities. Now a little bit about the lesson plans. I want to walk through the details of the lesson plan just, just quickly with you. Each lesson plan is numbered according to the chapter number 1.0, 2.0. Um, on haircutting, I believe there might be three lesson plans, so it would be identified as 16.0, 16.1, 16.2. The first page on every lesson plan is a class sign-in sheet. Down at the bottom, you'll see a place for the students to sign this. The idea of this form is that you photocopy it and you pass it around your classroom and you have all your students sign in on this sign-in sheet. If there's not enough room, have them sign on the back of the page and uh, put it in a binder and just keep track of your classes. This is just a really a documentation tool for you, for students who say, hey, I never learned this. You can go and you can look in the binder and say, well, we taught this on this date. Here you are, you signed in. So it's a, it's a, it's a reference for you, plus it's a way to document for your state boards or your regulatory agencies, your accrediting agency that you did teach a subject that is mandated by them to teach. So it's, a, it's just a way for you to document that. Uh, the second page looks pretty much like this. The only thing that changes is at the bottom you will see it says instructor signatures and then there's a place for educator references. And that's just um, a place for the instructor to sign that we taught it on this day. When you click on this lesson plan, it opens on the computer in a PDF file. That PDF file is, you cannot edit it. That you can't go in, you cannot change these lesson plans up. Now, you can print it out, you can write all over them, you make it your own by, by putting in your stories. We use the detailed lesson plans that follow the textbook as a roadmap to ensure consistency from class to class so that we know that every student is getting the same quality education. But that doesn't mean you don't bring you into it by adding your own stories, your own anecdotes, your own experiences into it, not to replace the contents of the lesson plan, but to make it your own as well. So then, therefore, we ensure consistency. So you can print this out and you actually teach from it. The next part of the lesson plan is the learning motivation. This is the, the student wants to know why. Why do I need to know this? Why do I have to learn this? Here's an overview that you can explain to the students exactly why this material is important. Many of you guys have great stories and, and ideas as to why this is important. You can add yours into that. There's nothing that says that you have to only share this learning motivation. Bring you to the table as well. And if you're just having a hard time coming up with something, this will trigger something that might get you started on that or use this very specific learning motivation. Get them excited. We have to get students enrolled into why this class is important. They don't get it. They don't know why it's important. That is our job as educators to explain why this is important so that they, they will pay attention. Very important part of your class to start with the learning motivation. The inspirational thought of the day is probably one of my favorites. You can put this up on a flip chart, on a marker board, and different schools do different things with it. Some schools I've heard will journal, have the student journal the thought of the day and then write just a couple of minutes why, what that quote means to them. You could start the day with a question or a discussion based on that quote. And it's all designed to get them thinking about possibilities, get them thinking about what they can be successful at. So look at how you can use that inspirational thought of the day in your classroom. Now the lesson plan itself, the, the next part of the PDF file when you open up the lesson plan is going to be divided in a two-column format. The left-hand side is is an overview. It's an outline of the material for the seasoned educator who, who knows this material. This is a roadmap to keep you on target, to make sure that you don't skip anything, to make sure that you're hitting every piece that needs to be hit. The right-hand side are in in-depth notes. 
They are comments that the instructor can actually verbalize or paraphrase to the students. We don't ever want to read it to our students. They don't need to be read to. But this helps us, oh, yeah, here's what I need to talk about, and then I can paraphrase that back to our students. The next part of the lesson plan contains a summary and review. Um, as we know with every single class, you tell them what you're going to tell them, you tell them, and you tell them what you told them. So the summary is telling them what you've told them. It's going in, summarizing the class, here is what we hit today, here is what is important, and then you can go through the review questions. Um, the review questions are the same questions that are found at the end of the chapter in the student's textbook. So get creative in how you use those. There's the traditional Q&A, nothing wrong with that. There's homework that you can assign, nothing wrong with that. But I challenge you to, to do even more with them. Uh, divide the questions up and divide the classroom into groups of however many students you choose and give each, each group a few questions. Have them take the question, come up with the answer, and have them present the answer, the question and the answer to the rest of the class. It gets them engaged and it breaks up the same old standard Q&A or homework situation. The learning reinforcement activities can also be found at the end of every lesson plan. These are ideas that you can bring in the class to reinforce what's going on, what you're lecturing on. It's um, There are going to be research projects. There might be um, assignments. There might be an activity to help them understand. You know, we are all done with, with the color class when we teach the law of color using Play-Doh. Different ideas like that are incorporated into the learning reinforcement activities. Also, throughout the lesson plan, in the notes section, there may be a place where it says, hey, stop and do this activity. So there's different places that you can draw from as an educator to come up with activities to make your classes more interactive and more student-centered. Don't feel that you have to use every single one of them, because honestly, there's a lot of them sometimes, and you may not have enough hours to do all of the different activities. So you need to choose ahead of time what will work best for you to bring that class, class to life for your students. Every um, lesson plan also contains handouts, transparencies. The transparencies, if you don't want to make them transparencies, that's fine. You can use them as handouts if you want to. But those are designed to photocopy and hand to your students so they can follow along with what you're talking about. The practical cosmetology skills competency criteria can pr contain practical skills for each procedure. They list specific performance criteria which can be used in conjunction with the school's practical grading criteria to determine a student's competency in any given skill set. Uh, the last part of every lesson plan, there's always a multiple choice um, test that goes with it. These tests that are in the lesson plans are, are different questions. It's a different question bank than the ones that you will actually find in the exam view test bank that we're going to take a look at in just a minute. So there's a, there's a test already created with every lesson plan, or once we get further into the, to the CD, we're going to see that there's another option for testing as well. You can use these as a pretest. You might use them as a study guide. You can use them as the actual test. It's completely up to you on how you want to use that. Now, if we go back to the to the CD and we, we look at it, the next item that we choose from, we were just in the course management guide, the next one that we can choose from here is the PC test bank. Now, this is what I was talking about. This is the exam view test bank. And uh, you can't see my red lines covering it, but this is available for either Mac computers or um, or PCs. I've got the PC highlighted right now, as that's what I have. So when we click on the PC test bank, uh, it's going to pull up this uh, window for us to look at. And right here it says exam, view, exam, view, user's manual. I would encourage everyone, you, everyone to open that document and read through it. It will give you a really good understanding how to completely use the exam view. I'm going to do a quick overview of it today. Uh, but if you really want to go to the next level with understanding the exam view product, go in here and print this out. This will open in a PDF file, and you can print it out, and you can really read through how to get the most out of the exam view. But let's take a look here. If we go to the next one, we can click on the exam view test bank, and it says install. Now, what happens with this is when you click on that, it is actually going to install it onto your hard drive on your computer. Okay? So 
to work the ExamView test bank, you will not have to have the CD in your computer every time. Once it's loaded onto your computer, it is there, and you don't have to have the CD any longer. So we hit install, and it actually will install it onto your desktop. So as we look here, you can see a, a copy of my desktop, and up here at the top, it says, ExamView Test Generator, ExamView Test Manager, and ExamView Player. So it loads these three different items onto your computer. So let me explain the difference, are, difference between the three. Honestly, the one you'll use the most is the Test Generator, so we'll look at that one in just a minute. But the Test Manager and the ExamView Player. The Test Manager, you can actually, it's a tracking tool for the instructors. The test can be automatically scored using a scanner. You can issue and grade tests online, and you can create a roster of your students and track the student's performance. So if you don't have other software that you utilize for this, right here built in, you have this test manager that you can set up every class independently and track their exam results on your computer. The ExamView player, you can actually post a test for the student, the student goes into ExamView Player. Not if you have a computer lab, you can post it on your network, and the student can go to the computer lab and they can open up the test that you've assigned to them, and they can go into this player and they can take a test on the computer, as opposed to taking test in class at the end of your class, or maybe you still give the test in class. Maybe you want to do makeup test on a computer. And so you could post them here in the player, and the student could go in, log in with their ID, and take the test on the computer. Now, like I said, go in and review that user's guide, and it will tell you how to fully use these two items to their fullest. The majority of us are going to use the test generator, and this is how we just create a test. So let's take a look at that. When you, when you click on test generator, you're going to have this screen appear, and this will be several options for you to choose from. You can create a new test using a wizard, and honestly, this is the one I use the most because it just does it for me quickly, and I don't have to, to spend much time on it. You can actually create a test from scratch. You can go into the full bank of, if there's 60 questions on a chapter, you can go in and say, I want this question, this question, this question, until you come up with your test. You can create a test from scratch. Once you, once you create a test, you can save it, and then you can reopen it at any time. So you can go back in and open that test, and you can change a couple of questions if you wanted to. Um, you can actually create a new question bank. I know many of us are doing detailed classes on product knowledge in our school. Many of us teach state law classes in our, in our schools. You could easily go in and create a new question bank that would incorporate those kind of test questions. So you could go in and put together a state law test bank. So you don't have to do that every single time. You can go in and put 50 questions and then create a 25 question test every time you taught state law if you chose to or do the same on product knowledge. Uh, you can actually go in and open an existing question bank and go in and take a list of the questions in there. And there might be a question in there that we've created that you hate. And if, if that's the case, go in and delete it out of the bank of questions. You can do that. You may go in here and we may only have 15 questions on a subject. And you think, I need more questions from that. You can go in and you can put in another 20 questions if you choose to. So these, two, these are very useful. You won't use them a lot, but if you want to get in there and recreate some of the questions that are in there and put some new ones in, these are the tools to do it. Like I said, the test wizard is pretty much how I spend my time in this product. It's an easy way to build a test. So when we click on create a new test using wizard, what's going to appear is a blank for you to type in the title of your test. Let's say you want to do a test on hair color. You can type in hair color. Maybe you want to do a final exam. You could type in final exam or midterm exam. Whatever you choose to do, you just type in the test title. And what's going to come up is a list of all the chapters. Okay? So let's say we're going to give a test on hair color. And I'm simply going to check. I'm going to highlight chapter 21, hair color. And then I'm going to go over here and hit select. And as I do that, 
it's going to move it down into the bottom half of the page that you see here, okay? Now, let me sidestep for just a second and tell you that maybe you want to do a test on all hair chapters. You could select, you know, the, the chapters 15 through 21 if you want and select each one and you can keep dropping test into this. If you're doing a final and you want to cover all 32 chapters, you can hit select all and it will drop all 32 chapters down in here, okay? Once you get the test or the chapters that you want to test on here in this box, you're going to go down here and hit the next button. When you hit next, it's going to bring up a list of questions. Now, a new feature with the 2012 product is that we have incorporated true and false questions and we have incorporated matching questions. In the past, we've only done multiple choice, but with this addition, we've actually incorporated some different types of questions as well. So what you do at this point is you go here to the right-hand column and you can say, I want 20 multiple choice questions and five matching questions. And then you're going to hit, um, if you're going to hit the next button. If you hit select all, it's going to choose all 68 questions. You know, testing is not to trick your students or confuse your students, and I don't necessarily think we need 68 question test on hair color. A 25 question test is sufficient. Now, if it's a final, I might do a 100 question test, but whatever your needs are, don't feel you have to use every question in there. After you, hit, you pick how many questions you want, you hit next, and it will quickly generate the test. That's how fast it does it. It will generate the 25 question test and at the bottom of the page, uh, I'm sorry, at the bottom of the test, you will find the answer key printed out for that as well. Okay? So you can then simply print that and um, issue that test to your students. So those days of having to sit down and write 100 question final exams is over. You can easily create a, a 100 question final exam with the click of a couple of buttons. Now, many of us, this is another really great feature. When you go to print, it will ask you first thing, number of test versions you want to print. And you can actually change that to two, three, four, however many you want to do. Most of us will do two. And you can print out two versions of the exact same test. So you've got a 25 question test here. I'm going to print out two versions. That means of my students that are sitting next to each other, I can give them the exact same test, but the questions are in different order so they can't cheat from it. Now, how you identify what is what, up here in the right-hand column it says IDA, the second test would be IDB, and so on and so forth. So you can, you can, you can print three copies of it, use A and B in the class, and then you C as a makeup test. So it's fair that all students are getting the same question, but they can't cheat by memorizing the order. So that's another great feature of this product. Okay, so that's it with the exam view test bank. Go in, play with it, see what it does. You can't hurt it um, because the, the original is always on the CD-ROM, and if you ever need to reload it on your computer, you can. So go in, play with it, see what's possible. When we go back to the main screen of the course management guide, you will see here the next item listed is image library. When we click on the image library, it's going to pull up this page, and up here at the top column, top of the page, you can choose what chapter you want to look at. And when you set, select this, I pick Chapter 6, Anatomy and Physiology. Over on the left-hand column, you can actually scroll down, and it has a ton of different images pulled out from that chapter. You can save them to your computer, so you could drop them into PowerPoint presentations later. You can copy it and do the same thing, or you could actually print this. You could print this page. You could um, use it as a handout for your students. You could white out these um, words and have the student identify what each one was. So you could use it as a worksheet if you wanted to. A uh, lot of different options on the use of that. Get um, creative in, in what you choose to do with this. I just want to remind you that the photos are copyrighted material and can only be used in your classroom for instruction. So we give you the opportunity to print and copy them, but they're only to be used in the classroom environment. So just keep that in mind. Um, I put one slide together to show you the variety of pictures that are available in this image library. 
and they're just fantastic quality pictures. It's always fun to, to freak the students out with the Nell Diseases Disorders uh, pictures. It really helps it come to life when the student can see a picture like this and relate it to what they're learning. The last piece to talk about on the main screen of the Course Management Guide is the answer keys for the theory workbook, the practical workbook, and the study guide. So you can click on any one of those and it will bring up a list of all the chapters. So I clicked on theory workbook, answer keys, and there's a list of all the chapters. When I click on chapter two, life skills, it is going to pull up a PDF file that has the, um, the theory workbook, chapter two, answer keys. So, it's, it looks just like the students except for that the answers are written in here. You could, you can print those out if you prefer to have a printed version to check your students against or you can just do it on the computer as well. Just a quick reminder, again, this is copyrighted material. If you choose to photocopy, if you choose to print this out, it has to be for grading purposes only. You can't copy this and give it to all your students because it is copyrighted based on that workbook. So the student would actually physically need to have a workbook themselves to take advantage of the workbook chapters, okay? Uh, with that, that is the Course Management Guide on CD-ROM. I hope that answers a lot of your questions and helps you understand how to use this uh, product better. If you have any questions about this, if you want more information, as always, contact your account manager or go to our website, milady.cengage.com, for more information on all the tools and products that we have available. We wish you the greatest success in what you do. We are your partner in lifelong learning.